Now, with that, while you guys are getting that all typed in, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you uh, to our speakers, Kashet and Sivan. Kashet Koram um, is a research uh, researcher who focuses on obstetrical violence in general, and specifically in the maternity rewards in Israel. Her previous work examined the connection between traumatic childbirth, motherhood, and shame. Her childbirth rights, she is a childbirth rights activist, a former publicist, and a PhD student in the University of Haifa, Israel, in the Gender and Women's Studies program. Now, Sivan Leinhardt, uh, currently works as an ER nurse while doing a PhD at the medical science faculty in the University of Tel Aviv, Israel. Her research focuses in the field of bioethics from different aspects and perspectives. Her current work examines women's choice during the pregnancy period and childbirth. I am going to turn presenter privileges over to Kashet and turn off my camera. And thank you guys. This is going to be a great presentation. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Uh, thank you for introducing us. And this is so excited to see how many uh, people have joined us from all over. Um, this is a very beautiful uh, format of uh, um, doing a presentation. So thank you so much. Um, and I will uh, start. Uh, we will discuss today about um, how can we improve maternity care in Israel. Nope, sorry. Yes, okay. Sivan, unmute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to see today how we can change maternity care in Israel and we will go, we will go through different topics. Uh, starting from how maternity care is operating now in Israel, uh, the results of our survey concerning what women want during their pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum period, and see the gaps uh, they are, there is today uh, um, from the needs to the desires and the reality of the maternity care in Israel. We will see the gaps uh, that we have in terms of equality in maternity care and see how we can um, go through them. You can next. Okay, so what's interesting to see in Israel is that in terms of uh, an OECD country, it's the leading one in terms of fertility. We are talking about 3.1 children per child. Most of childbirths are occurring in hospital, knowing it's a public health care service and only one to two uh, percent of women give birth at home. Home births are highly regulated and remain a private service uh, in Israel. It's important to understand how uh, women, pregnant women and childbirthing women are taken care of during, uh, in a healthcare uh, perspective. All the prenatal visits are uh, performed by an ob a obstetrician and not by a midwife. Uh, this option does not exist today in Israel. And the prenatal care is uh, done by a staff that is different from the staff in hospital, meaning there's no continuity between the different teams, medical teams. Uh, during birth, uh, today in Israel, midwives are um, taking care of three laboring women simultaneously on average. If we talk about figures in Israel, we can see that third of the births are first birth women. Uh, the use of epidural is about 60%. We have 22% uh, birth inductions. Women that had a previous cesarean section uh, give uh, birth vaginally afterwards in 80% of cases when they try to uh, to have a vaginal birth afterwards. 6% uh, of births are instrumental births, and uh, we have 16% uh, of episiotomy and about 17% of cesarean section. It is important to mention that those rates are, uh, in fact, um, averages. You can see um, also the range from the different hospitals, minimum and maximum, 
of all those interventions, it's important to know that in Israel, the, this information is not public, publicly um, available, meaning that a woman giving birth in such or such hospital does not know what is the inter intervention rate in that hospital. Also important to know is that because we Israel is a quite a little country, women can choose where they give to birth, in which hospital, mainly if they live in the center. But if they live in the north or in the south, the choice is very limited. For example, in the south, there are only two or three hospitals. So I uh, stopped the video. I wanted to know if it's um, it's easier to see the screen that way or not. Sivan, do you prefer to leave the video on? Uh, let's see. I think it's bigger like that. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it that way, and we'll open the video when we have a question. So um, this is a, a actually um, the research uh, we are conducting in this uh, past two years. This is an online survey uh, when our aim was to create a database of women expectation and experiences of childbirth. We wanted to promote new policies to adapt care and to train medical staff. As Sivan said, uh, most women in Israel will go through uh, childbirth uh, more than one. And this was the actual the, the first time um, that a survey that big was conducted when women actually uh, been asked, what do, you, what do you need? What do you need in your pregnancy? What do you want postpartum? Um, a lot of the responses we've got uh, from women were that this is the first time they uh, stopped and uh, thought about her, their needs and their, their desires. So our inclusion criteria in the survey uh, was women who gave birth in a hospital in the past five years and pregnant women who plan to give birth at a hospital. The reason why uh, we examine only um, hospitals and maternity wards is because, as Sivan mentioned, the majority of childbirth are happening there. So who are the women who answered this survey? So above 3,000 women answered, um, and the average age was 30, the majority were married. Um, they were um, ha um, born in Israel, 86% of them, 40% gave birth before, and 60% of the women who answered, that was their first pregnancy. 70% of all the women who answered uh, was aiming for a vaginal birth, and 60% wanted to give birth at the same hospital they did before. As of their history, 31% uh, had a miscarriage and 8% um, have been through IVF treatment, 3% had a stillbirth before. The majority of women described themselves as heterosexual, uh, they spoke Hebrew fluently, had a bachelor degree or a master degree um, more than the average uh, percentage in uh, the population and only 30 percent of them um, are earning less than the average paycheck in Israel. Most of the women uh, that gave birth before had a vaginal birth and when we asked about past experiences of sexual assault we wanted to um, give, to give women an option to answer not only a yes or no rather to give a scale. So 7% answered and they agree uh, if they uh, been through um, sexual assault before, uh, agree in a mild way. 9% said they agree in a slightly way and 22% say they agree in a very slightly way. So when we go through the results of our survey, we can see that during pregnancy follow-up, women were talking about the preparation to pregnancy and childbirth, the availability of medical teams and information they would like to have. We can see in terms of source of information, it's interesting to see that women mainly got the information from informal um, sources as internet sites or friends, then books, and only then by the um, primary obstetrician, childbirth courses, and then Facebook at last. Most importantly for women, they were uh, wanting professional consultancy uh, in terms of availability, but also in terms of informal way of communication as emails or phone. Only then 
they were uh, interested in the partners in involvement having uh, ultrasound checkup up our, as per request birth preparation courses maternity ward meeting before um, the birth itself and emotional accompaniment it's interesting to see that although for most women it's important uh, to have uh, availability of professional consultation, uh, at the end they receive their information from informal sources as internet, as I said before. In terms of assistance during pregnancy and in fact all the follow-up uh, and, and checkups, women were, interest, were interesting to have um, these made by uh, midwives. As I said before, this option does not exist today in Israel. Um, and only then by female obstetricians or male obstetricians. When we look at how women, uh, women choose the hospital they want to give birth in, they talk about the different possibilities, the consideration and the staff. Most importantly, they look at the staff professional skills, at the treatment they have received before in a previous visit or a previous birth or the maternity ER visit, the option for zero separation. It's important to, to know that in Israel, uh, it's not an option that is available in all hospitals and for all women, there are certain conditions and only certain maternity uh, ward that uh, offers it. Then they were looking at one-on-one -on -one midwife continuous of care. And as I said earlier, this does not exist today in Israel in the public service. Uh, healthcare. Uh, we, uh, one midwife is uh, treating three uh, birthing women uh, in parallel. Mm -hmm. Only when women choose to have a private service or home birth, then they have this uh, follow-up with the, uh, the, the, the midwife and uh, having one-on-one -on -one care. Um, they were also looking at the natural childbirth approach and the rates of medical interventions. When we look at what a woman meant during the childbirth itself and not only choosing the, the, the place that would give birth, they are talking about the staff, again, the possibility and the consideration and also uh, the privacy. We can see that uh, they were looking at being informed about the childbirth, uh, giving informed consent before medical uh, interventions, the availability of midwife during the childbirth itself. Um, and also uh, being involved during the childbirth process and the treat having a respectful treatment. It's interesting to see, and it's important to mention that we can see that uh, choosing the hospital, the women focused on professionalism of the staff, but during childbirth, they were focused about the treatment and the quality of uh, human uh, um, um, relation they would receive during the birth itself. Here again we can see that women would have preferred to have the assistance uh, of a midwife during the childbirth. In Israel it is uh, constructed in a manner that uh, it is true that the midwife are the main uh, professional actor uh, during birth, uh, but um, there's always an intervention of uh, an obstetrician. Um, so first, uh, they would like to have the assistance of a midwife, then a female ob obstetrician, and only then by male obstetrician. As per, uh, if we look at the postpartum period, we can see that uh, women talk again about possibility, which is uh, something that is redundant during all the different periods. The baby, breastfeeding, sleep, night, silence, and food, which are in fact uh, basic needs that we all need, but uh, especially in this uh, challenging period for women. Uh, if they look uh, at the maternity ward after birth, most importantly, they would like to have their partner and their escort present during the night also. Here I will mention that in Israel, this is not um, occurring in most uh, or even all hospitals. The partner or, or the doula or the escort or someone that is with a family cannot stay at night, uh, only in very, very uh, specific cases and specific hospitals. Then the women were interested in uh, encouraging breastfeeding through available cons uh, consultation and also the number of women in the same room. Um, in Israel, 
we are talking about four to five women in the same room after birth and also the availability of nurses uh, during their stay. So um, throughout the questionnaire, throughout the survey, we asked women about their emotional state. Um, we asked them um, how was uh, their emotional state during pregnancy, during the childbirth itself and after. So what we saw that women who experienced emotional difficulties during pregnancy were more interested in continu continuous midwife-led care. Uh, as Ivan mentioned, uh, this option does not exist in public health care in Israel. Also, we saw that women who experienced worsening in their mental health state after childbirth wanted postpartum follow-up visit with the midwife or the OBGYN that treated them during the childbirth. Um, in general, uh, what we saw that the preferences related to postpartum visit was um, towards the primary OBGYN, the one that uh, the women saw uh, during their pregnancy. After that, we saw um, a preference of uh, seeing the uh, person who assisted them during childbirth and then their uh, primary care uh, physician. Again, as Sivan mentioned, um, this is not uh, an option right now to see the uh, staff that actual, actually treated you during childbirth only um, at the childbirth itself. So what we also saw that women who seek mental assistance during pregnancy or experience sexual assault in the past were more interested in having an out of birth, uh, uh, out of hospital birth. Again, this is uh, something that has been uh, legally uh, discussed and for now uh, is not an option in Israel. Women who experienced sexual assault wanted to give birth at home or at an independent childbirth center or preferred uh, water birth. Again, this is um, water birth is an option that is only available in a very strictly um, um, a hospital and under a very strictly um, uh, pregnancy related uh, issues. As for past childbirth uh, experiences, when we asked women who gave uh, birth before, we asked them uh, what is the guidance and the reference uh, to treatment that they got from uh, um, the hospital staff. So 78% said they received information about need of uh, medical consultation, red flags they need to take care of um, as of their uh, physical condition. 90% visited uh, gynecologists in the recommended time, and 81% received no information about the need of, for mental or emotional assistance. 38% of the women who answered the survey said they felt their mental state has worsened uh, than before birth. 37% were concerned during their childbirth, and 60% said they seek mental assistance during pregnancy. Um, again, when we look at the numbers of uh, women that said that uh, they felt their uh, mental state has worsened, and then we see the 81% did not give, gave, did not receive any information about what to do, what is the red flags about their uh, mental situation. This is um, a very concerning matter. One of the most important thing um, we wanted to know in our survey. Um, was about how was the treatment they received uh, from the uh, medical staff. We asked them about the communication and the treatment experience they've been through. So 76% of the women said that staff spoke to them in a respectful way. Uh, they treated them nicely. 70% said they were asked about uh, uh, for consent before medical interventions. Um, I remind you the uh, things Ivan uh, has mentioned about what important for women in their childbirth. Um, more than 90% said that to be given a consent to be informed was the priority for them. And then we see here that only 70% were asked for a consent. Um, so 67% of the women said the staff introduced themselves, staff respected their wishes, 66% uh, felt involved in the childbirth process and received explanation and information before interventions. Um, again, this is, uh, of course, there are um, uh, countries that are um, 
saying uh, worse uh, things about uh, mistreatment and abuse during childbirth, uh, but 35% of the women answered by no at at least three of the questioning. Again, this is uh, something we wanted um, we wanted to put on the table when we approach now after the survey with the results to medical staff um, and uh, decision makers. So we know that um, our, our survey and research has certain limitation and one of them is in fact the language barrier. We know that uh, we lack of access uh, in, in terms of language but also in terms of social media uh, to uh, minority groups uh, of the survey and we would need uh, further research about minorities population in Israel as well as specific uh, geographic location as I said uh, earlier uh, the north and the south has uh, more limited choices in terms of a uh, hospital or in terms of uh, birth choices in general what we can see for sure during uh, from the results of our survey is it's very important to empower and support midwives as well to listen to women needs in relation to their maternity care um, and that can bring a, a big change in terms of experience and birth outcomes. So uh, from the results of our survey we can see main changes that can be brought uh, especially in terms of midwife relet care, continuity of care and out of hospital options. Uh, we see there's an urgent need to change policies to make um, midwife led care more available, to have more uh, women uh, midwives uh, working at hospital, meaning that not that we will not have a man, one midwife for three three um, three uh, birthing women but tend to have one-on-one -on -one care and also um, have uh, more access for out of hospital versus for women but also for midwife to attend them. Um, of course the aim is to allow uh, birthing women to access quality public health care with no relation to their ethnicity or geogra geographical location. So the main um, matters that we can highlight in terms of uh, what we would like to expand, uh, the options we would like to expand for women, we are talking about continuity of care during pregnancy and childbirth, uh, including, of course, involvement of women during those periods, uh, and also taking into account, account the emotional and physical support uh, in the postpartum uh, period. Uh, in fact, expanding, expanding the, the options means that uh, we uh, expand the community-based care and uh, support all midwives uh, to expand their activity uh, in community, but also in the hospital. So we wanted to give uh, to give a few acknowledgement. We wanted to thank uh, Kiran Briao, our partners, uh, Sarah Tankman and Mital Banjuk, that um, were a part of this uh, survey and a part of this research, and our graphic designer, uh, Michal Shamla. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, welcome back, everyone. Let me get the, the recording paused here. Lorraine says, turn your recording back on. Well, I did. We have to move that slide. All right, so do you guys have any questions at all for Kachette and Savan? This was a wonderful presentation. I'm watching the hing. We'll see. Anyone at all? I'm amazed at this accomplishment. I mean, that was this was phenomenal. And if you guys can actually uh, get some changes made within the facility and the the organizations, and just to get people thinking about this is incredible. So congratulations to you all. This is just amazing. I think that was uh, uh, the main thing when we saw the results. 
Uh, mm -hmm. When we thought about the survey, I think we wanted to give as many options, but we didn't necessarily thought this is what women uh, will say they want because these options mm -hmm. are not available. Not everyone knows this is something you can actually want. Yep. All right. Well, you guys, um, I don't see anyone else typing here. I'm but... typing my email if anyone uh, wants to stay in touch or to ask something afterwards. Uh, maybe see if I will want to write her email also. Um... Let's see. We have a few more messages below here. All right, guys. Well, this has been a wonderful presentation. And um, I guess uh, since we don't have any questions right away, we can email uh, Kachette and Savan if, in fact, um, we have if we have a need. Uh, looks like Lorraine has mentioned that uh, Seal is typing. So we don't want to leave anybody else. Uh, and Seal says, in the U.S., most hospitals are for profit. Hospitals are required by insurers to survey patients following a hospital birth. Hospital midwives, physicians, and nurses are exhorted to treat well so they, the survey results are high. That is to say, all of the staff are urged to provide respectful and compassionate care to clients so that the survey results look high. Hospitals that have high ratings on respect and good treatment actually receive a bonus payment from the insurance companies. Mm, that's interesting. It's you very know. interesting because um, um, in Israel, a lot of the times uh, when we uh, approached um, the um, health ministry and said that women are um, actually uh, complaining about treatment, uh, we were giving the response that women can choose whatever um, maternity ward they want. So if they choose, they can, if they did not, did not like the treatment, they can choose another hospital. Um, but saying that, as Sifan has mentioned, the, the word choosing, um, we, we really, you know, need to, um, to, to keep a safeguard from that because a lot of the times women cannot actually choose uh, where to go to. Um, so not only the, um, the dollar sign should, uh, you know, be um, be the reason for a good treatment uh, rather than seeing um, childbirthing women as, as, as a person. Yes. Also, a lot of information in Israel is not publicly available. So as Keshet said, it's, I mean... It's very difficult to really choose uh, in a in a consent way, let's say, or informed way, uh, the, the the place where where they give birth. Um, do you guys know? Will your uh, results be censored in any way? Are you going to be able to publish your full results? Well, we we do we are not related to any. I mean, we did not did this survey uh, related to any hospital or to the Ministry of Health. We did it in a free way, I mean, uh, academically, pure academically way uh, related to the university uh, and uh, the organization, uh, Karen Bria, that uh, Keshet mentioned. So it should not, I mean, I don't see any reason it would be uh, censored, but, you know, who knows? <laughs>